A large storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, and this will bring the return of significant severe weather to areas like the Great Plains, and then eventually towards the Midwest Ohio Valley and Dixie Alley, where damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes will all be possible. Additionally, some of the coldest weather that we've seen all May long is coming to much of the country, and we could even see some below freezing temperatures in parts of the Northern Plains in the Midwest. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacted the United States over the next seven days and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and right now things are actually somewhat quiet we currently have a large low pressure system that is spinning back over in the northeast and as that continues to move northeast it will bring some rain and even a little bit of snowfall to some higher elevations in Vermont New Hampshire and Maine and this is something that you do not see very often even in the middle or end of May and then back over in the central and southern plains you might think it looks kind of quiet but we actually have northwesterly flow currents in place and this could actually bring the risk for some severe weather in the southern plains today and so we need to keep an eye on the potential for mesoscale severe weather events really over the next couple of weeks but especially today as very large hail damaging winds and a tornado risk will exist back over in texas and oklahoma and then as we go into the weekend our risk of severe weather will grow in size across the great plains as a low pressure system comes from the pacific ocean and we will have the potential for a more widespread threat of severe weather i think as we go into sunday or monday and just a quick recap from Tuesday's severe weather event, we are now over two dozen tornado reports across areas in the Midwest and back into the Ohio Valley and the Dixie Alley. We nearly had 500 severe weather reports, making this a severe weather outbreak and also at least a small scale tornado outbreak, but storm surveys are still undergoing. And also back earlier this week on Sunday, we actually had a bunch of tornadoes in Southern Kansas, five of which were confirmed as EF3 tornadoes. You do not see this very often, and they were all within pretty much the same area area near Greensburg and Plevna. Almost all of these happened after sunset and we had multiple wedge tornadoes. Four of these EF3 tornadoes were over a half a mile wide. So really crazy stuff here. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next week as it is going to be very different, which is also going to allow for more severe weather. So right now we have a big dip in our jet stream back over along the East Coast. This is going to bring some colder weather in addition to additional showers and thunderstorms across the Northeast. A very weak ridge will be building across the Great Plains on Friday, but that'll really weaken as we go into Saturday and Sunday as a low pressure system will begin to move over the Rocky Mountains, and as turbulent mixing occurs, we are going to start to see the return of some more significant severe weather, I think, especially as we go into Sunday and Monday. So this storm system will move into the Central Plains on Sunday. It'll become a bit more organized, and I do think there is a chance for at least a slightly more numerous to widespread event of severe weather, either Sunday night or Monday night. So definitely a time frame that we need to keep an eye on here across parts of Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and even Louisiana. Eventually, as we go into Monday and Tuesday, that storm system will move across areas in the Ohio Valley. And honestly, this has a somewhat similar look to what we just saw last week with the trough that's actually going to be back over in the Great Lakes. But the biggest difference is going to be that we'll have a surface-based high pressure system that will really start to kind of create a more stable environment, I think, across the Ohio Valley. So generally speaking, unless this low pressure system is strong enough, we may see some severe weather in the Ohio Valley are along the East Coast on late Tuesday or Wednesday, but I do think the odds of that are pretty low. And then beyond that, we are expecting an active weather pattern to continue at the very end of May and also into early June. Things could change between now and then, but I do think the Great Plains are going to start to light up with a lot more severe weather. At least every single day, we'll at least have a low-end threat of severe weather, probably beginning around May 30th or so and then running into early June. Obviously, a long-term forecast, but I do generally think that is what our weather pattern is going to look like throughout the very beginning of June. Now, let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Thursday we have a slight risk of severe weather in place right along the Red River Valley in Texas and Oklahoma right in the Dallas Fort Worth area near Ardmore Oklahoma where there will be a chance for very large hail and damaging winds those are really the biggest concerns for today we could see hail as large as the size of softballs out of a storm or two so definitely make sure that you're protecting your vehicle around 10 million people are in the risk here for significant hail today so definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware we will likely see multiple storms fire up this afternoon and guess what there's actually a low tornado risk and if we end up getting a tornado warning at some point this afternoon we will likely go live for it so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live it is a fairly populated region here in north texas which is one of the reasons why today is a bit more concerning as we go into tomorrow our risk of severe weather grows quite a bit across much of the great plains where we are expecting more severe storms capable of mainly damaging winds and large hail but i would not rely on ice 
isolated tornado, primarily back over in the Texas Panhandle and also western Oklahoma. And there's also a small marginal threat back over in eastern Florida where wind and hail are possible. As we go into Saturday, our risk of severe weather continues. Generally speaking, it's another low end day of severe weather. However, I do think there is a slightly more localized area here in western central Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle where very large hail and even a tornado or two will be a possibility. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. And as we go into Sunday into Monday, the risk of severe weather will shift further down to the south and east where we are expecting another round of severe weather and capable of producing scattered to numerous damaging winds, large to very large hail and tornadoes. And personally, I think Sunday and Monday look to be the more concerning days of everything that we are talking about here over the next five days. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather, beginning with what's happening today. A couple of storms will attempt to fire off early this afternoon across central Oklahoma, mainly with a large hail threat. By around four to five o'clock, storms will become a little bit more numerous across the Red River Valley, where damaging winds and hail are the main concerns. But there is a localized area here near our warm frontal boundary where there will be a chance for a tornado or two, mainly again in southern Oklahoma near Ardmore and also far northern North Texas. This will be mainly a mid to late afternoon and very early evening threat. So by around seven to eight o'clock, these storms are going to be crossing over the Red River Valley, not moving very quickly. And then by around eight to nine o'clock, what is left of this area of thunderstorm activity will move through Dallas Fort Worth, I think mainly with a wind threat, but there will likely still be some large hail and a very low but non zero tornado risk. And then as we go into the overnight hours into early Friday morning, things look pretty quiet. But I do think Friday is another day that we need to be keeping a very close eye on because as we go into the late afternoon and early evening, right around sunset, if we have enough instability, we actually could see a couple of supercells initiate in western Oklahoma. And if this happens, we actually could see a strong tornado. It is definitely in play. Our environment is actually quite favorable in western Oklahoma for a tornado or two, but it is going to depend on initiation when that exactly happens and if it happens. If it does happen, though, a very photogenic tornado is a very strong possibility, and we could also see a strong tornado. So this is something to watch for, but damaging winds and hail would also be some concerns here during the late afternoon, evening hours, and then eventually just after midnight, these storms are going to be falling apart after they pass through areas like Oklahoma City. And then as we go into Saturday and Sunday, our low pressure system will begin to intensify over the southern plains, where I do think severe weather will become a bit more prevalent. I think Saturday, generally speaking, will just be isolated to scattered severe weather across the central and southern plains. But on Sunday, I think things start to ramp up. The GFS model is depicting a pretty numerous to widespread thunderstorm activity area uh, as we go into Sunday afternoon and evening, stretching from about Joplin and Springfield, Missouri, back towards Dallas, Fort Worth, and as well as Abilene, Texas. I think Sunday will be mainly a wind and hail threat, but there could be a few tornadoes as well if we get a line of thunderstorms that has embedded tornadoes. And then eventually, as we go into Monday, the storm system will continue to track east. I think severe weather will continue to be possible, mainly from Dallas and Fort Worth, all the way back over into Tennessee, Kentucky, and also across the Dixie Alley. Generally speaking, though, I think Sunday is going to have the best chance of being a bit more of a significant severe weather day, especially in Oklahoma, where high damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes are going to be possible. Eventually, as we go into late Monday and Tuesday, the storm system will weaken as it approaches the east coast, but there could be a little bit more severe weather left over in the southeast. I don't think the Ohio Valley is going to see a whole lot, despite our jet stream having a low pressure system over top. It would be a very low chance. It's going to depend more on our high pressure system near the surface. If this dominates, then we're probably not going to really see that westerly flow used up just like what we saw last week. However, it is something that we need to keep an eye on in case this high pressure system is forecasted to be weaker as we go throughout the weekend. Eventually, as we go through Thursday and Friday, that high pressure system continues to sit across the Great Plains, and then more severe weather should return across the Great Plains at the very last day of May and eventually into early June, where the weather pattern looks to stay pretty active. And we are about to see some of the coldest weather that we've seen all May long. Cold weather is going to be sitting across the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast as we go into Friday. This could allow for some rare May snowfall back over in the Northeast, so be ready for that if you're in the higher elevations of New England. As we go into the weekend and early next week, cold air will continue to build across the Great Plains and also back into the Midwest as our low pressure system passes through and moves towards the East Coast, so get ready for some nicer weather across the Great Plains, especially in Texas, where we've had 90s and 100s a ton already so far this year, and then by the beginning of June, things become a lot more uncertain, but I do think colder than normal weather will continue back along the East Coast. One of the crazier things that you'll see is that as we go into tomorrow morning, we are expecting low 40s and even upper 30s across most of the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, and the Northeast. Bust out those jackets because you will need them. It is getting a little bit more chilly here, and for somebody that lives in Florida, this is basically very cold. It is very frigid. Now, obviously, 
for those in the Midwest. This is basically early spring type weather, but nonetheless, definitely chilly. Have those jackets ready to go for tomorrow morning. Climate Prediction Center also agrees that we will likely continue to see below average temperatures throughout the remainder of May, anywhere in the Ohio Valley, back even into the Southern Plains, and then above average temperatures back to the West or along the Rocky Mountains. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have more videos here over the next few days, including tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, as long as we have a more significant threat of severe weather in play, which again, I do think Sunday and Monday look to be a bit more significant. There is a low chance of a live stream today and as well as tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live and have a fantastic rest of your day.